So Docker Compose is going to allow me to write a text file which defines the configuration of my entire running architecture. You can store this text file anywhere you like. Just to keep things simple, I'm going to put it into my Eclipse project. So this is the Fleetman web app project. Normally I wouldn't really do this because this file for Docker Compose is defining the configuration of the entire architecture. So I'm going to have a lot of other workspaces that are referenced by this Docker Compose file. For now, at least, it's not a bad idea to put the file in this project because I'm certainly up until now thinking of this Fleetman web app as being sort of the central service in this architecture. So if you don't like that idea, you can put it anywhere you like. I'm going to put it in the root of the project. And by default, this file is called docker-compose, but it is a YAML file. So it will be YAML. Now my Eclipse currently isn't uh, configured to edit YAML files, so it's popped up a notepad editor. So I can right click on the file and open with, and I'll just go for the text editor in Eclipse. So I assume you're fairly familiar with YAML files. If not, it's a file that depends very much on indenting and you need to indent using spaces. So all I'm going to do in this file then is define that for this system we have two, we need two containers at runtime and we need them to connect to a particular network. It's really quite simple. Oh well, nothing in life is that simple. Unfortunately, in Docker Compose, there are, at the time of recording, three different versions of the syntax. What they've done here is, every so often, they've introduced changes to Docker Compose, which have been breaking changes. And to allow for backwards compatibility, they allow you, at the top of the file, to specify which version of the syntax you're on. So we could have version colon, and then in quote marks, the version number that this file is based on. Now, at the time of the recording, the latest version of this syntax is version 3. And because it's the latest, that's what I'm going to be focusing on on this course. But if you had some old legacy scripts and you wanted them to still work, you could do what I've done here and just say that I want to go back to version 2. Whichever version you go for, and we are going for three, I think it is actually mandatory that you have that version line at the top. So in YAML, just in case you're not familiar with YAML, we work with key value pairs. The keys end in the colon, as seen here, and then we have some kind of a value. Now I just suggest you follow along. It's not particularly exciting. Really, all we're doing in this file is capturing all that information that we just ran on the command line. The first concept in Docker Compose is that we call the containers that we want to run services. Now I like that. You think of each container as being a single standalone service in its own right. And I, and now I've talked quite a lot about that earlier on in the course, but now these concepts are coming together. I hope you too are thinking, of a container, not as being some kind of a Linux virtual machine. A container is some kind of service within your system. So we've got two of them. And the way that we define them is on the next line, we're going to need to indent inwards. You can use two or three spaces, it doesn't matter, but you must not use tabs in YAML there. And we simply declare the name of the service that we want. So we have two so far, one called Fleetman-WebApp. And then at the same level, we have one called Database. So these are the names of the services. Notice you don't put name colon, which often surprises me. But we do need a colon at the end of the name because we're then going to go ahead for each of the services and define all of their configuration properties. So underneath Fleetman Web App, we'll need to indent again. All you've really got to do is just think back to all of the command line arguments that we supplied for the web app. Of course, we need to say what image that this service is going to be formed from. So we have the image key 
and the value for that is the name of the image we're running. Again, I'm using Fleetman-Production. You're probably using Fleetman Web App. We need to connect this services container to a network. So we have a networks key. Now notice it's a plural here because a container can be connected to multiple networks. And for that reason, for the first time in this file, we need to specify a list. A list in YAML, I'll do an indent under there, and a list element is preceded by a dash. So we're going to connect it to the Fleetman network. And if we were to connect it to more networks, we'd just add more elements to that list. We only need the one, but you still need to declare this as a list. We also did port mappings on the command line, and we do that using the ports key. And again, this is going to be a list. And the elements of this list, key value pairs again, exactly as on the command line, actually. We're mapping port 80 to port 8080 in the container, key value pair and we could add more port mappings if required. And I think that's all the elements that we had on the command line. Let me remind myself of that. Here is the run command for the Fleetman web app. The dash D is not relevant, but we've connected our container service to a network. We've given it a name. Remember the name comes from here. We've mapped the ports and we've declared the image that we want to run. If you're bored of listening to me droning on, you could pause the video at this point and complete the job for the database. Or if you want to follow along with me, it's going to be the image is simple this time. It's the standard MySQL image. We have the networks exactly the same. We'll be connecting to Fleetman network. We don't need any port mappings in here, but what we do need are those environment variables. So how do we add in environment variables? Well, I should be showing you the reference manual here. And on the same page that I showed you before, there is on the left hand side a link to the compose file reference. And these are the different versions that I talked about before. And because we're working on version three, I'll follow that link. OK, now on this page, it's quite a long single page of all of the valid key value pairs that you can specify in this file. But over on the right hand side, usefully, there's an index here. Now we're looking for how to specify environment variables. And just with a quick look down here, I can see there is a key there called environment. And this looks like exactly what we need. Confusingly, possibly, depending on how familiar you are with YAML, there are two ways of doing it. In fact, you can either use an array or a dictionary. And it's actually the other way around. This is the array version where they've specified the values as a list. And the values in the list have equals in them. Alternatively, you can treat the environment variables as keys. So we have here a set of key value pairs. It's obviously up to you which of the two you use. I always go for the list version. I suppose the array version, so we have environment and then a list. So we have the, keep that one in line. We have MySQL underscore root password is going to be set equal to password. And we have MySQL database set equal to Fleetman. And that's it for that container. The other thing we're aiming for with the Docker Compose file is we should be able to run this file cold, by which I mean, even if we haven't configured anything in our local environment, this file will be able to run. And what I mean by that is I don't want to have to go to the bother of manually creating this network before I run this file. And for that reason, we can very easily define the networks as well right here in this file. We do that by we close the services area by moving the indent back to the far left hand side and we have a new key in here called networks and underneath here we will just declare all of the networks that we want for our system as again a series of key value pairs. 
The key is going to be the name of the network. So we have Fleetman Network, followed by a colon, and the value is going to be any special configurations that we need for the network. Well, we haven't been configuring these networks, we've just been doing Docker Network Create, Fleetman Network, and for that reason, we don't need to supply anything after the colon. If we wanted other networks, we would just go on and declare further ones. So again, going back to what the reference manual said, this is not a list, it's actually an array in YAML. It's not an array, it's a dictionary, meaning a set of key value pairs. That's why you don't need the dashes here. Okay, well, we don't need that second network, so I'll get rid of that. We just need the one Fleetman network. So I hope you're beginning to get a feel for what this Docker Compose is all about. In this single file now, I have the configuration of all of the containers for this system, meaning that I'll be able to run this system now with just one command.